Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Mark Crypto Boy in Aussie. It's Thursday, it's the 1st of July. And what's happening in the crypto markets? What's going down? At the minute, not a lot. Basically, Bitcoin is between 30, 35. I think it peaked just over 35 yesterday. Um, and it's just hovering around the same kind of the same kind of numbers. So you could say it's pretty boring. I mean, if you're in it, if you're in it and you're forgetting about it, you probably you might not even pay much attention to crypto. You might have just bought it and just get on with your daily life and probably every every now and again every now and again check it. But for most people that's that's impossible because once you go down the rabbit hole and you get into crypto, it's bloody addictive and you can't stop looking at it. I mean, you're constantly looking at the at the charts. And its only similarities is I also sell on Amazon. And I used to check, I used to check um, the app to see what I've sold every day, probably 10 times a day. And I still sell on Amazon. But since I started crypto, sometimes I actually forget to check my Amazon business. That's actually giving me a genuine income um, every day of the week. Like, I get paid every two weeks from Amazon and from being addicted to Amazon, it's like there isn't, there isn't enough uh, space in my head for two things at once. So crypto's kind of took over and it doesn't even give me an income. Amazon's giving me an income and I've, I've kind of, apart from keeping up with stock and that, I don't really give it the time it deserves. Uh, and now I'm all into crypto and I say, I, I must check coin market cap probably 20 times a day. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. Like literally. Before I get out of bed, I grab my phone, look at coin market cap and see what's going on. Um and if you buy an old, it doesn't really matter, does it? You just it's just but it's just like you you want to know, you need to know what the price is. Um and at the minute, it's pretty it's pretty damn boring because there's not a lot happening. It's just going sideways. Is it going to have a drop down any lower than below 30k? Who knows? Is it, is it, is it, is it suddenly going to reverse and start like an upward trend? Nobody knows and it can get boring. So what I've, what I've just kind of just recently started getting into is kind of, because I've been understanding a little bit the charts I've started doing a little bit of trading and I tell you what, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's really exciting. The hard bit is not to, not, not to, um, change your trades. And by that, I mean, if you've done any trading, it's setting, setting your, um, your sell order to what you want to sell it for. And then setting your buy order and, setting these not not just by speculation by looking at the charts and leaving it so yesterday i set i set about five, five well i'd already sold day before yesterday so on wednesday I'd, i actually sold um five different coins that i've got like a percentage i think i sold well 20 25 percent of my coins I sold a, um, a predetermined target that I wanted that I wanted the price to get to, and it got there. So I, I ended up with fiat about eleven thousand dollars, and then I set buy orders at my predetermined price from looking at the charts, and I was pretty confident they get they get there. So I set them, and then yesterday when I was at work, I had a look at the um, I had a look at the charts, and the start the prices started turning around bitcoin had a bit of a a bit of a like a push for a few hours so it set off the alts to have a little bit of a push and i thought oh i've got in i've i've noticed this at a perfect perfect time it was just coincidence that i was checking it and i kept checking it over the space of an hour and it started slowly creeping up so i thought okay great great i'm just gonna buy back in so i kind of cancelled my buy orders and i just put i just bought back in and i made a little bit but then over the course of today 
Um, if I'd have just left it, I'd have actually made way more. And that's the hard thing. Um, it's it's the emotion, just trying to trying to not. It's watching it. It's watching the charts. You look at the charts and you see it go up and down, up and down. And you, if you're checking it every ten minutes, you're noticing it. But the thing is, when what 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 I've what I've got to remember is when I'm looking at the charts. I look at the. Um, hang on, let's jump here. So I look at the 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 four hour chart um, because that's pretty much like the four hour chart for me. I I just think that's that's like over a two to three day period. That I'm well, well maybe not a, maybe not a two to three like a one to two well one to three day like trading pattern. What I'm kind of working towards. So, like, obviously, if you were trading like a smaller, smaller candle, like an hour, then that could play out in a day. Um, but then the gains aren't as much because obviously the price doesn't generally go up and down so much in in a twenty four hour twenty four hour period. Obviously, it can do, but on a four hour period, I've I've I'm, I've got different kind of targets that I want to get to. So, so if you look at this, for instance, like Matic. So, like now. I mean, I'm I'm all in on Matic. I've got all. I've not. I'm not in. I'm not in cash at all. So I'm going to wait for. Um, I'm going to wait for the price to get back up to this area, here, and then I expect it to pull back and come back down to this trend line somewhere around here. Um, I mean, it might not play out exactly like that. I mean, it might just go sideways a bit longer and come back down like over here so it's a bit higher up on this trend line but so basically if you look on this first little area i've got here marked out it's between how's it not working that ah that's why so between 120 and 124, I'm expecting it to reach that kind of level and then have a retracement and come back down to this this trend line, what it's kind of what it's been following for a little bit. I mean it was following this area over here, and then it's cut it has come down a little bit more, but it's still kind of following the trend. Um the reason why I've picked this area, obviously, if you don't know anything about charting, and let me tell you, I, I don't know a lot. I don't know loads. Um, I've just been educating myself from Sheldon the Sniper. Got to give him his credit because he's a he's an amazing dude. So this is this is the trend line which it has been tracking. I say it's, it was tracking it bang on on these one, two, three, four, five points, but then it has broke it here a little bit. And then this is like a, another trend line from that high up there, from this from this high here. So again, it's something that it's gonna reach, touch maybe. Um, but then I've I'm looking at this kind of this area over here because you've got all this, all these candles in and around this area. So you've, so you've got it over here where it's kind of went in one two three four five six seven eight like there's pretty much 10 candles all in this area which is between 120 and 124 so um i'm gonna I've, well i have i've put a sell order in i think for about 120 122 somewhere around there um and it's 25 percent of my matic so as soon as that executes, then I'll put another, I'll put a buy order in um, for probably around one one eleven thereabouts. Yeah, one eleven, one twelve, and what I've got to do then is just leave it, just forget it. And let me tell you, right, if if you if you're really interested in crypto, um, and when things are going sideways, and you don't mind taking a little bit of a risk, take a little bit of your 
your portfolio and just just try and get used to trading try and just educate yourself a little bit and, and just get used to a little bit of trading because like this is where you can just build up your wealth you can build up your coins and i've i've literally only just started doing it like probably for the last two weeks and i'm not getting massive numbers like i think one time I, one time i had like i traded 50 with 50 yeah, I think it was fifty poly, fifty um, dot polka dot, and I made, I made, I made two polka dot, so the percentages were tiny, and I could have made more. I could have made more. It's just because I ended up looking at the chart and thinking I were being clever and bought them back, and when I should have just left it, and I would have got more just leaving my um, buy order. But it's, I don't know, it's really, it's good because it gives, it gives you confidence. You're learning and they're all in patterns. Everything just goes up and down. And when you figure out, when you figure out support, resistance and trend lines, you realize that that's what everyone else is doing. Everyone's setting. So all, all your traders, they're all setting like buy orders and sell orders and um, spot losses work. They're all on these key points. So if you're trading on these same key points, a lot of the time you're gonna you're gonna you might lose a few. Um but you're gonna win more than you'll lose. And if you if you set if you if you set stop losses, which I didn't really think about until Sheldon started talking about set your stop losses. So like they're like previous supports underneath where you've like you've bought in more or less um they're like just previous supports where you'll you'll sell um on these previous like laws if you will like if here for instance you'd probably be like if i were if you were buying in now at like 109 you'd probably set a stop loss around 103 one or four thereabouts because if 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 it brought this trend line chances are you'd, it'd bounce off kind of this previous this previous um this area over here where i'm pointing to like one or three one or four so you set a stop loss there so if it because if it if it did break that if it did break that price then it'd be going down lower Till it reached some some kind of resistance somewhere else, um, so yeah, I have I have been using stop losses too. And when you're doing it with like a small amount, like twenty percent, twenty five percent of your of your actual portfolio, it's quite good because you you, you you've got your main you've got your main uh, portfolio like locked up locked up where you don't touch it, but then you've got this small amount ten like like well. 10%, depends how much you've got really, but 10, 20%. I mean, I'm doing 25% just because that's what I wanted to, that's what I, that's what I was comfortable with risking. Um, but the fact that you can make coins without new money, it's brilliant. I love it. Um, and I only do it with um, what I'm prepared to lose. And the good thing is it's not, it's not like gambling. Because if you think about, if you think about gambling, um, you can win or you can lose. If you lose, you've lost, aren't you? You, you kind of lose everything. If you win, okay, you've won, you've won. But with with this, it's not win or lose because you're not really losing. Like if you if you sell going to fiat and it comes down, um, and you 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 might end up losing out a few coins. But you're not putting that much at risk. Like, I give it went up, for instance, and you, you, you um, sold, but it carried on going up. It's going to come back down again and retest that same area, and it might not come quite as low as we, what you you sold out at. Um, chances are it will, but it might not do. But then when it comes back and retests it, then you can just buy it back you might lose out a few percent and the same when it's going down as well 
like with your stop loss, you might lose a little bit on your stop loss, but you're not you're not you're not losing it all, are you? You're only losing like a small percentage of it. And in the process, you're learning and you're learning because you're doing it and you're interested and you can make, you can, like it's small, it's small gains, but if you can do, like I've done, I've done one this week and I've set, obviously I've just set it again for these targets here. So if I can get two in a week, like this week I made, I didn't make a lot, I made, um, 80, 80 Matic, which isn't a lot. Um, well, I'm saying it's not a lot, but it's, if I were buying it, like with cash, and it'd be like 190 to hundred dollars to buy it, and that didn't cost me any money. I just did it just through trading, and it gives you. It, I mean, trust me, it gives you like a really good feeling because why nothing's happening in crypto, and you pri you you you. you your prices might be going down. They might they might be go most people are probably out of pocket a little bit if they've got in recently because everything's gone down. And even recently from the previous laws, it's gone down even lower. But while it's going sideways, because it's going up and down, up and down, up and down, just making a little bit here and there, and it's building your portfolio up. I mean, obviously what it what it is in cat in fiat don't really matter. I mean if I I've made eighty matic for nothing just by educating myself and doing a little bit of trading, it's kind of, it's a really good feeling, like really good. And with Polkadot, I sold at five, where did I sell? I think I sold, in fact, let me just check. I think I sold about five, uh, no, six, six eighty. I think it were. Yeah, yeah. So I sold at six eighty, and I had a buy order in for I think five forty, and it started going up. It, it on these two candles here. This is when Bitcoin decided to have a little pump, a little go up. So I saw it. I saw it coming down. At five forty. Um, I can't remember now, but the, the, these two green candles it started going up again. So I kind of panicked a little bit. So I sold it, and I shouldn't have done. I should have just waited, and it come back down again. And I got it at five forty, but I think I ended up paying five eighty for it. So I didn't really make a lot. I made a couple of I made a couple of um, polka dot, and I've done it. I did it with about four or five different coins, matic. Um, Matic, Link, Cardano. I didn't do it with Kasama because, um, well, I didn't. I just didn't. I don't know why. And another coin. I can't think what other coin it was now. But yeah, I did it, and I made. I made a little bit on each one. So it's really it's a really good feeling because you're making you're making coins without actually spending any money. So if you've you're happy to use ten to twenty percent of your portfolio, and you're using like an exchange where you can, I mean, you can do them on all exchanges. But if you if you get confident and you feel like just getting used to trading and just setting some buy orders and sell orders and stop losses, it's well worth it because you can just increase your increase your holdings on all your different coins that you've got so anyway let's have a quick look at the heat maps i, I love looking at these um and even though majority of them are red a few green nothing's really done much everything's everything's like plus or minus five percent which in crypto is pretty Pretty good. I mean, even even when you've got an, like a full red candle, um, when everything's got red candles on it, if if you if your worst coin is five percent, I mean, it's, I mean, it's what is it? Ethereum Classic? Is that Ethereum Classic? I keep moving; it keeps changing. Yeah, Ethereum Classic. I can't understand this coin. I mean. Don't do anything. 
Right, literally, it's got no founders behind it or anything. But I think something is happening where it's having a, I think it's having a hard fork. Um, so, but I mean, considering it's like fifty three dollars and it does it does absolutely nothing, it's pretty crazy. Has something just happened where everything's just gone green all of a sudden? Everything's changing. So yeah, plus or minus 5%. So look at Bitcoin, 33.4, Ethereum 2.1. I mean, if you look at what it's done over seven days, like, nothing's really... I mean, something's up and down, but nothing's really massive over, over a seven-day period, is it? Apart from ICP and Ethereum Classic. Maybe that had a pump because of the hard fork that's coming, possibly. So yeah, that's pretty much all I had. I, just, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do a big, um, big recording. I just thought I'd have a chat about maybe doing a little bit of trading, just to, just to give you a bit of confidence, and then also read it. Looking the, <clears throat> you need you need trading view for sure, because you can't if you don't have trading view, then you're just gambling really because you're guessing. If you're just looking at if you're just look, literally looking at. Um, coin market cap and you're thinking oh because the thing is with coin market cap all you're seeing is if it's up or down like this is literally all you've got up down like red but red or green whereas if you're looking at trading view you're looking at you look you're looking at trend lines it's like it like the i'll just change this polka dot one because i've not hang on like look at that trend. Look at look at this. This is how trend lines work. I'm just changing it now. So got this trend line off the touching there, and then here it's hit that trend line, and it's not it's not a fluke. Like it's not just random. I mean, it hits that trend line and bounces off it. It's because trading and candles is all human emotion, and it's because people set buy orders and set sell orders based on trend lines and support and resistance levels so like look at this now when i do this extend this trend line so this is already bounced off that and this is the trend this is the trend line and it's not come down it's not come down anywhere near it yet i mean it could it could come down down to like fourteen dollars thirty around that price, and then oh you've oh it's gone up gone up and hit that trend line. It could go up a little bit and hit it again, or it could go and hit these this area here where you've got these kind of resistance, kind if you will. Where if you put if you put up put a line in across here like this this now where I know it's sixteen seventy. And that's hitting this um, this candle, this candle, this candle, and then it's kind of these two candles is kind of where it topped out at. It kind of it hit that support, uh, sorry, the resistance, and then the candle wicked up to the trend line, which is like the resistance. Well, it's form resistance. It wasn't resistance at the time because it was a new kind of. It was a new breakout. It was. It went above. It went above these previous candles, so it broke out a little bit, and it's that's formed a trend line for then this this um, candle to hit. So it's not. It's not guesswork. You can see, see what I mean? If you're looking at coin market cap, and you think, "Oh yeah, I'm go I'm going to buy that because it's because it's what." I mean, unless you've got mentally the price in your head what it was. You've not really, you've no data, have you? You just, oh yeah, it's it's um it's up a fraction, it's down a fraction. Um, you've you you're not looking at anything to give you an informed decision. Where if you're looking at this, I can say I know. Um, okay, I'm setting a buy order. Uh, sorry, I'm setting. I've I've already got the coin, uh, so I'm going to set. I mean, I won't go off this trend line. I won't actually go off this trend line now. I'd probably go around this area here off this previous high, or maybe this one here. So I'd probably set two sell orders. I'd set one around 16.30, and then 
a second one around 1680. So if it doesn't go to that higher one, I've sold part of my lower one. And then if it does go to that higher one, I've not put all my eggs in one basket. I'm, I'll make in a little bit more by selling it higher. And then for it to come back down again, I'd expect it to come down to around the same kind of level or maybe even lower on this trend line. So I'd, 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 set, I'd then set a buy order around 15... 15.23 and then I probably set another buy order around 14 any, anywhere from like 14.50 up to up to then to be honest anywhere up, for, up to 14.50 up to 15 15.20 thereabouts so you you're not you're not you're not buying you're not you're not going all in on the higher amount. You you're doing part on that, and then you've got to do part a little bit lower. So you're kind of staggering the odds a bit in your favour. Um, and you might not get it. It might not go down. It might not go down that low. But then if it didn't, you can just buy it back where you're happy with a little bit higher up. So, and again, I'm not a I'm not a um, trading expert. Obviously, you know that if you if you watch anyone that does trade, then they're understand a lot more than i do but i think just understanding the basics like understanding like the volume like when you you can see here, there's not much there's not really much in the way of selling or buying it's it's pretty low across the board and then you can see here where you had big volume where it were going up people were buying and it was shooting up here the big volume coming because it were the price were dumping, 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 and then when it got to around here, um, 14, 14, 20, 14, 40, then the the bulls have pretty much said enough's enough. That's that's plenty low enough, and it actually come down to thirteen, thirteen, and that's when the buyers have pretty much said, right, okay, fair enough. That's that is where that is way too low. We don't need to be getting buying it any lower. And everyone's come in and started buying there. And that's that'll have happened over a couple of hours. Like if you jump onto the one hour. Yeah, so go on the one hour. If you look here, you've got you've got like one, two, you've got three candles. So over an hour. It kind of went to went to thirteen dollars, uh, for the second hour it was like hovering in the middle somewhere. Then the the third hour that's when it shot back up on a on a candle from like thirteen dollars up to fourteen seventy. Um, and then you've got your zoom back in a little bit. Pick that pick that up. Right, so then here, then here you've got your stock stock RSI. So when this is when this is down here, like on, below the purple line, below the purple, when it goes underneath it, and it's that's when you expect it to turn. So then that's when you're kind of expecting the price to go back up, and then when it's at the very top at these points. That's when you expect the price to come down, and if you look on, if you look on here, it's it's kind of the in, it's the inverse of what you're looking at. Well, it's the same as what you're looking at. So when it's when it's at the very top, it's basically following the price, but it's kind of giving you signals. Like you might look at it and think, well, it's just following, it's just following what's already there, and it is to a point. But when it gets to the when it's when it gets to the tops. And it's plateauing. It's that's giving you the signal that it's going to reverse and it's going to start coming back down again. So, just following these simple kind of rules and setting setting buy orders, setting sell orders, and setting stop losses, and taking emotion out of it, and don't do what I've been doing and checking it all the time, then you kind of get tempted to jump back in. So set it and forget it. 
and then check your phone because like what what happens is your phone will beep and could just be an email but then if you see um if you see um an email and it's from your from your exchange and it says uh, order complete and you know you know you've got it and then you can check your wallet then and we well, could check your you can check and see see what you've bought it at or what you've sold it at. So yeah, it's pretty. It keeps these times keeps these times a bit more exciting. And again, you're learning. So anyway, I'll not keep any more of your time. I've been on for like what, half an hour. Yeah, I've been on for half an hour. So if you like this video, smash the like button. Um, if you want to see more content like this, uh, subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you on the I'll catch you on the next one. And what I will say is invest well. Don't choose rubbish. I've said this on quite a few videos. Um, but in at the time we're in now, this like the burr cycle of the bull cycle, or the burr the downward trend of the bull cycle, I think we're in. I don't think we're in a bear market. I think we're just in a I think we're just consolidation phase of the like a bull cycle. But <clears throat> while there isn't much of a market cap where there's not a lot of money in, in crypto, I think a lot of retail have panicked and sold. It's only 1.3 trillion. So there isn't there isn't enough money physically in cryptocurrencies to spread thinly across all these lower coins. So a lot of the lower coins there isn't the money to be brought in to bring the price back up. So some, some coins that are really low priced at the minute, unless they're really good coins, then don't bother with them. Keeping keep coins that have got really good fundamentals, they've got really good, as I say all the time, um, founders, developers. Um, unless you know one that's kind of, that's got all that going on behind the scenes, but it's not kind of too cough yet. Like for instance, if you're looking at the, any, any new platforms, any new projects that are coming on Cardano network, like I've got Oaken Finance and I've got Giro Wallet. And there's also another one, which is an Oracle, which is going to be coming out on uh, Cardano. It's, it's called Charlie three. Um, so, and there's, there's lots of others. I mean, I'm just, picking them three off the top of my head but if you know something like that that's that's got a good team behind it and it's something that you think it's going to do really well it's not just like a shiba coin or some meme coin that doesn't do anything um that's just literally literally gambling um stay clear of like just complete rubbish because at, at the minute it's it's going to be difficult to make money it's different be different like when, if this bull run starts accelerating again and picking up and then altcoins kind of go have like a bit of a second wind and that's when you'll start getting more money coming in and you'll, then you'll get people speculating on these meme coins and S coins, shit coins if you, if you want to call them that. That's where you'll get money coming in then. But at the minute, like trying to look after your portfolio and just invest in something that's decent. So that's it for now. Um, until the next one, invest well.